McDonald, Charlie Rocketman, and Buck Henry seated at the Weekend Dug Update studio desk. Pardo. It's Weekend Dug Update with Norm McDonald, Charlie Rocketman, and Buck Henry. McDonald. Yesterday, it was leaked to the media that the Supreme Court of the United States was set to overturn Roe v. Wade. In other news, Walmart is having a sale on coat hangers. Rocket Man. And we're getting word now that there's been a run on coat hangers at shopping centers all across the country, though coats themselves remain in healthy supply. We're going to send it to Brittany Murphy at a local Walmart. What do you have for us, Brittany? Cuts to Brittany Murphy holding a microphone at an overrun Walmart. With behind her dozens of women looting. Murphy. Well, apparently a baby, since you refuse to wear protection. Rocket Man. <clears throat> um, how about at the Walmart, sweetie? Murphy. As you can see behind me, Charlie, it's absolute bedlam here at Walmart. As women have torn the place up. I believe they're searching for coat hangers. Gilda Radner cuts in front of Murphy and yells at the camera, Attica! 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 Murphy. Ma'am, why are you here? Radner. We're done letting the government tell us what to do with our bodies. We're gathering up all the coat hangers we can, and we're all going to pledge to get pregnant and meet back here at the end of the first trimester and rip them all out with coat hangers. Murphy. Back to you guys. Henry. With both the potential overturning of Roe v. Wade, as well as Elon Musk buying Twitter, droves of Twitter accounts have been reinstated for aborted fetuses. Or as they're otherwise known, Republicans. McDonald. These aborted fetuses, invigorated by the Supreme Court, have claimed that the son of President Eisenhower, John S. D. Eisenhower, is actually still alive and fighting abortion clinics from the inside. Rocket Man. Though John Eisenhower is potentially fighting abortion clinics from the inside, Bill Cosby is helping abortion clinics from the inside by raping all the female prison guards. Henry. Now to talk about the hot-button issue of the day, is none other than the most outspoken and fearless comedian of all time, George Carlin. George? Carlin! I think that both sides have just about equal-sounding arguments, and I just advise you check out georgecarlin.com. Ah, fuck it, I hate this bit. I'm ad-libbing, okay? Why is it that most of the people who are against abortion are people you wouldn't want to fuck in the first place? Those conservatives will do anything for the unborn, but once you're born, you're on your own. Henry, George, the producer wants to know if you're going to go after copyright infringement. Carlin, fuck that guy, I probably will. Pro-life conservatives are obsessed with the fetus from conception to nine months. After that, they don't want to know about you, they don't want to hear from you, no nothing. No neonatal care, no daycare, no head start, no school lunch, no food stamps, no welfare, no nothing. If you're pre-born, you're fine. If you're preschool, you're fucked. Conservatives don't give a shit. Carlin's mic is cut off. Henry. The producers have cut off George Carlin's microphone so they don't have to pay his estate. George Carlin, everybody. McDonald. This just in. Five conservatives have just unsubscribed to the semi-annual georgecarlin.com newsletter. Shows Carlin screaming and banging the desk. McDonald. Now to discuss the merits of the Supreme Court's potential decision to overturn Roe are former federal appellate judge Robert Bork and pot-smoking casual former lawyer Greg Geraldo. Bork, thank you, Mr. McDonald. This should not be a politicized issue, and to the extent it has been shows the grave misunderstanding the general public has about what exactly it is the Supreme Court does. Geraldo! Women have the right to choose what happens to their bodies. Bork, if I may finish, the Supreme Court does not enact legislation. It instead is the final arbiter of whether or not enacted legislation is indeed permissible or not under the law of the Constitution. Geraldo, this guy doesn't get it. He wants women back in the Stone Age. Bork, 
please, if I may. Roe v. Wade held that the Constitution specifically forbids states from outlawing abortion. My position is that no fair reading of the text of the Constitution in any way supports or refutes the notion that the Constitution forbids such a law from being passed, if one were to do so. Geraldo, God, these right-wing religious zealots are just over the top with their obsession with controlling women's bodies. Bork. Again, I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that the Constitution forbids the complete legalization of abortion. I'm saying that nothing in the Constitution's text, nor anything we know about the motivations behind its ratification, say that a state making abortion illegal is unconstitutional. It's a decision that should be left to the legislative branch. Geraldo! Well, I haven't seen the Constitution anywhere around here, so it must not be dead. Therefore, it's alive and can breathe life into new issues so that we don't have a run on coat hangers. And live from Tom's phone, we're not alive. It's Saturday Night Live, starring an ever-evolving cast that is unionized and refuses to allow their names to be mentioned until their demands are met. Musical guest, Naomi Judd, and your host, Charlie Chaplin. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Chaplin. Applause, applause, applause. Chaplin. <clears throat> George Carlin comes out. Hey, Charlie, how's it going? Chaplin nods approvingly. Carlin. Well, that's good. I hope you don't mind, but I got cut off during my little abortion spiel. Okay, you know about abortion, right? Chaplin nods his head cautiously. Carlin. Well, you don't mind if I finish, do you? Chaplin bows and directs his hand towards Carlin. Carlin. Thanks, Charlie. Conservatives don't give a shit about you until you reach military age. Then they think you're just fine. Just what they've been looking for. Conservatives want live babies so they can raise them to be dead soldiers. Pro-life, pro-life... These people aren't pro-life. They're killing doctors. What kind of pro-life is that? They'll do anything they can to save a fetus, but if one grows up to be a doctor, it might just have to kill it. They're not pro-life. You know what they are? They're anti-women. Simple as it gets. Anti-women. They don't like them. They believe a woman's primary role is to function as a broodmare for the state. Pro-life. You don't see many of these white anti-abortion women volunteering to have any black fetuses transported into their uteruses, do you? You don't see them adopting a whole lot of crack babies, do you? That might be something that Christ would do. Jesus Christ comes out and says, I do believe there are some pretty significant tax breaks if you do so. It's something I've considered. Garland. Oh, Jesus, you're still here? Easter was over two weeks ago. I wasn't expecting you to show back up until your birthday. Christ. George, good thing Mary didn't get an abortion, right? What would that be? The immaculate abortion. Carlin. Well, with you it wouldn't work anyway. Three days later you'd somehow be right back in her womb. Anyway, I'm sure that Charlie doesn't mind me telling you we have a great show tonight. Naomi Judd is here. So stick around and see if love can build a bridge to the abandoned abortion clinic. We'll be right back. 